Hi everyone, congratulations on making it through section four. Now, of course, there isn't gonna be an overall review of this section, just that's why we did it in three parts, so we can do individual reviews. But let's talk about what we did do in this. We created our herbs, which were based on things from section two, so we don't need to explore that. Same with the trees themselves, we imported meshes for this, so we're not going to explore that. What else did we do? Well, we brought into our world the spawning resources, and we used the foliage system. So we're not gonna review that, because that, that's something we made, and there's documentation on it. We use the procedural foliage spawner. Again, we're not gonna review that because there's documentation on it. What we are going to review, the part that really we spent the most time tackling here. I guess we will review the trees actually a bit. Also, by the way, if you haven't noticed, there's an error with the trees, is our resource, resource spawner. So we created this very, very, very complex, not very complex, but relatively complex system for spawning in resources. So we have a structure of resource details, which we created, let's just pop that open as well so we can take a look at that structure. And where we store information about our particular BP resource that we want to spawn in. And then we make sure that this structure has a val at least one valid entry. If it doesn't, then we destroy the actor. If it does, then we move on to the next step. And the next step, we do a double check just to make sure that it's valid. If it isn't, we destroy the actor if it hasn't been already. And then we iterate in an outer loop. Remember, an outer loop moves slower through our resources that we want to spawn in. And we loop the number of times we're gonna spawn them in based on the density setting here. So let's say we have three resources that we're spawning in, two tree types and one herb. And the first tree type has 10 trees. This will go through, you know, index zero run through 10 times. Then it goes to the second tree type, so index one, and maybe this one has 15 tree types. And so that runs 15 times. Then it comes back to this loop and goes to our second index, so the third thing we're spawning in, the herbs, and it goes, all right, well, I'm gonna spawn in 100 of them. So remember that the reason why this is a slower loop is this has to go through all its iterations first before this can go through a, an iteration or change iterations. So we created this lovely confusing looking racetrack of spaghetti noodles to make our spawning system. So what we do is we get the number we want to spawn in we take one away because we start at index one or zero. We could change this to one and just plug that into there. I, I don't like doing that. It makes the coder in me sad for some reason. And we loop through the number of uh, for our density. We store a bunch of things in locals from what we're making to how much there should be. That's what these three are to if it's a tree or not, to if we're using random rotation, to our scale settings. We then have this check that we set to zero. We then do a line trace in a spawn volume by finding a random area in it and then searching above it and below it for ground. Because this can spawn in at any area, here's one of the volumes, it can spawn in here and then of course we need to go down. But it can also spawn in here and we're under the map and it needs to go up to find the ground. So if I can get to the right spot, it finds something correct then we check, are we allowed to spawn on any surface type? Now we haven't used this one in this, but I have tested to make sure it works. If it is, then we spawn it in. Now we'll cap talk about what happens after we spawn it in just a moment, but most aren't gonna spawn on a particular surface, or on any every surface type. So we then check what type are we allowed to spawn on. And we use a simple Boolean check with two returns and make sure that what we've hit is a valid target. If it is, we then spawn our target or spawn our resource, spawn. That's brawn. Now, if we don't hit a valid target, so their line trace goes, I haven't hit anything. We then increase this count we have here by one. And then we check, is this value equal to 10? So in other words, have we done this 11 times really? If it isn't, actually no, that would be 10 times. I was wrong. Because if it's equal to 10, it's not equal, it's not greater than 10, it's equal to 10. That is 10 times, not 11. I was mistaken. Cool. All right, anyway, if the um, if it isn't 10 times you've done this, we go back through and we do another line trace. And we keep repeating this until we either find a valid area or we've exceeded our number of attempts. This is to prevent an infinite loop. The same is said if we hit a valid area for, you know, a valid surface, but it isn't a valid surface for spawning onto 
whatever we're trying to spawn. Again, we come through here, we increase our count check, and we go back through until we do find a valid area. So eventually if we do find a valid area, if we don't, it just goes to the next iteration. If we do find a valid area, we then spawn in our resource. The impact point is our location. Our rotation is based on either if it's allowing random rotation or not. If it is not allowing random rotation, the rotation is zero. Now trees get a slightly smaller rotation area than herbs do. So we check if it's a tree type. So we have to actually say if it's a tree or not. We then set our scales. We then calculate the base resource amount, which we're probably gonna have to iterate this because that gave us some really big numbers. And then if this has successfully spawned and is a tree type, we move the tree so the socket we've added to our trees actually is embedded in the ground. Now there's a lot of abstraction I'm doing here by not opening these up. You know, we're calculating rotations, calculating scale, base resource amount. It's all in the videos. This is just a recap and I think the more important part is understanding how this overall works. I will gladly abstract these as much as I can. Um, also because they're just a pain to, to look at for me. All right, next, let's take a look at our tree resource just because we did something a bit different in our tree. So let's go to our construction and our tree master here. We overrid in our tree, our construction script. We are doing, if it was discarded, then we are gonna set it to uh, be the branch of vegetation for discarding. Don't know why I did that. We also changed the collision size. Otherwise, if it wasn't discarded, then we are just going to have the normal construction script from the parent. We also overrode our pickup event. So this first part remains the same. If there's nothing here, delete the thing. But then we check how much can we harvest? How much does the item have? If our harvest amount is greater than our item amount, in other words, if we have the ability to pick up five pieces of wood, but there's only one piece of wood left, then we're gonna pick up the one piece of wood. If it is not greater than, then we pick up the harvest amount. This remains the same from earlier, but this explains why we had that input I was talking about before. If the item is not destroyed, then we do nothing except for re-trigger our overlap so we can keep harvesting. If it is destroyed, then we check was it not discarded just because we could be picking up wood that we dropped on the ground. If it wasn't discarded, then we spawn in a tree stump. If it was discarded and we're just picking it back up, then we just re do, do we need to pick anything else up? Same with the tree stump actually. Once it spawns a tree stump in, we should get a prompt saying, hey, do you want to pick up the tree stump? Now we don't because the collision area around the tree stump is a bit smaller. Uh, so we're a little bit farther away. So yeah, that is what we did in section 4C of this tutorial. Congratulations on making it this far. And I look forward to seeing you in the next section of our tutorial series. Where we'll be working on our weather systems. Remember to hit the subscribe and notify icon so you know when that section is out. And to hit the like button to let me know that I'm bringing you content that you appreciate. All of that said, I look forward to seeing you in section 5 of this series. And I hope that you have a one wonderful day.